This is Excel 2016 Module 4. The majority of this module is on charting. Creating different forms of charts or picture ways of displaying your data. However, the very first segment is using a payment function which will allow us to calculate a loan repayment amount. Now as we'll see later in the semester, this function can also be used for investment services, purposes, excuse me. But in this case, we are calculating a loan repayment. So let's go ahead and open the file that we will be using for this tutorial or this module. I'm going to go to File Open and then you're going to Browse and we're going to go to the files that you downloaded from the Q Drive. Go ahead and go into Excel 4 and the module and choose the file called Backspace. Now if you have to enable the editing, that is a safety procedure. I downloaded mine from the internet and so it does require me to enable editing. We're going to go to the business loan worksheet and on this worksheet we are going to calculate the amount of money that they would have to pay monthly and annually if they borrowed money to expand this business. So in B4 we are going to be entering the amount of money that they would borrow which is hundred and fifty thousand. Remember when we enter numbers you do not need to enter them the formatting that goes with them. So you do not type the dollar sign or the commas. 0.06 is 6% and that is the annual interest rate that they will be using for this calculation. The assumption here is that we are making monthly payments based on this heading right here. So with that in mind, that means there are 12 payments per year. We need that information because the interest rate that we need to use in order to calculate the payment for each month is the interest rate for one month or for one payment period. And in order to calculate that, we're going to enter a formula equals, and it's going to equal the annual interest rate divided by the number of payments in a year. And that will give us the interest rate per period. Now this annual interest rate sometimes is referred to as the APR. So if you see that terminology, that does mean the same thing. The next thing we have to look at is how many years are we going to be paying on this loan? So the assumption is it's going to be paid in 10 years. Now we cannot deal in years in our payment formula, we have to deal in the number of payments we will be making or the number of periods. We have 12 periods in each year so therefore we can enter a formula that will multiply the number of payments in a year times the number of years and that gives us the number of payments we will be making. 
Once we have all of that information, we now have everything we need to create the payment function. So to do that, we're going to go to the Formulas tab. And under the Financial button, you're going to scroll down and you will find PMT. You want to be careful because there is a P PMT and that is different. We will use that later on in Module 9. This time we just want the PMT. And if you hover over these fields, you will see that we do get the payment description as well. So this first box says it wants the rate. Notice on the tip, it tells you here it has to be the interest rate for the payment period. For example, you would have to take 6% if the APR is 6%. You would have to divide that by 4 for quarterly payments. In our case, we have already computed that. So we're going to go ahead and click on the rate. Now we're not going to be copying this formula, so you do not need to worry about whether you use absolute or relative references. Those only become an issue if you are copying the formula to another location. The number of periods we calculated here as 120. You could put formulas in these boxes, which I will show you again in one minute. Then the present value is always the loan amount. The future value the future value is what do I owe after I have made 120 payments. So if I should have paid the loan off completely after 120 payments, the future value in a loan repayment calculation should always be zero. So you can leave that blank or you could type a zero. And the type has to do with the timing of the payment. We're going to leave that blank unless you are told to do something different in the instructions. Okay, so once you get that information in, you can click OK, and it shows you the payment amount. To calculate the annual payments, you can take a formula that will multiply the monthly payment times the number of payments in a year, and that will give you the annual payment. Now I wanted to show you one thing. Let's go ahead and do this payment function one more time. So under financial, we will choose PMT. If I had not computed the rate here, but I have been given only this annual rate, then what I could do is I can put a formula right here in the rate box. I could say, take the annual rate and divide by the number of payments and it would calculate that rate for me. The same way with the number of periods. I could say, take the number of years and multiply that by the payments in a year. And then finally, I would have the present value. And you can see that it would generate the same answer. So if you do not have these two pieces of information calculated here, you can put formulas in the different boxes on the logical argument screen.